In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through chapter 6.4, the current account of the balance of payments. So now let's look at its structure. So the balance of payments is the financial record of the country's transactions with the rest of the world. This records all income going in and out of the country. And some countries will run surpluses. This means that exports are greater than imports. As people are paying for exports, there's more money coming into the country. On the other hand, deficits means that the country is buying more imports as they are exporting. This means that they are spending more money to other countries. And surpluses and deficits affect growth, jobs, inflation and economic stability. The first component to the current account is trading goods. This records exports and imports of all physical goods or tangible goods. Exports bring money into the domestic economy and imports send money out to foreign economies. An example of a net importer would be the United States of America. An example of a net exporter would be China. Trade and services is the next component to the current account. And services are counted as intangible products or goods. This includes banking, insurance, consultancy, shipping, tourism, etc, etc. For example, tourism is essentially an export. As American tourists come into France, they consume the experiences within France and then they leave. The next component is primary income. This records income earned from overseas investments, whether by government or multinational companies. This includes profit, interest and dividends from abroad. For example, firms earn income from foreign subsidiaries or FDI. And then from the foreign subsidiaries, they repatriate their profits back and this is counted as primary income. The next component is secondary income. This records income transfers between residents and non-residents. This includes aid, donations, pensions, scholarships and remittances. For example, migrant workers will send money home to their families. And the calculation is as follows. The balance of trade, which is trading goods and services, plus primary income and secondary income. If this number is higher than zero, this means that we are in a surplus. And if this number is on the negative, this means that we are in a deficit. Now moving on to the causes of the current account deficit. The first cause is lower demand for exports. The exports will fall if the domestic cost price is higher than foreign countries, which make them less competitive. Recessions abroad will reduce the incomes of people abroad. So buyers demand fewer exports and stronger exchange rates make exports more expensive overseas. This is exchange rates for the domestic economy. And the next cause is higher demand for imports. The demand for imports will increase if they are cheaper or better quality compared to the domestic goods. Stronger domestic currencies will make foreign goods much cheaper to buy. And lastly, domestic inflation will make imports relatively more affordable. All of this will increase demand for imports. Now moving on to the consequences of a deficit. The impact on GDP regarding a deficit means that the economy is spending more on imports than they are domestically. Therefore, the total demand for goods and services domestically falls. And if this persists over time, this may trigger a recession. The impact on unemployment is that falling demands for exports reduces labor demand. This will lead to cyclical unemployment in the export industries and workers may face job losses or wage cuts. The next impact is on the standards of living in the economy as outflows of income will reduce national wealth. And because a deficit can lower GDP and increase unemployment, a deficit may force households and firms to cut spending and lower income leads to a weaker living standards overall. Deficits also have an impact on how countries borrow, 
as countries borrow or attract foreign investment to fund deficits, borrowing creates long-term debt which needs to be paid back with interest. And when the interest payments become too burdensome, the opportunity cost is there's less money for the government to invest in public services or growth. A deficit will have an impact on exchange rates and inflation as it reduces the demand for the currency which lowers its value or depreciates. A cheaper currency, although it makes exports more competitive abroad, imports will be very expensive such as food and oil. These are necessities for a nation. Now moving on to the causes of current account surpluses. One cause will be higher demand for exports, as competitiveness improves with higher labour productivity. Rising incomes from abroad will increase spending on exports, and lower exchange rates mean that exports are now cheaper to foreign buyers. And another cause is reduced demand for imports. This will fall if they are deemed to be too expensive or of a low quality. A lower exchange rate will make foreign goods more expensive, making them less attractive and competitive. And overseas inflation raises import prices. This boosts domestic demand significantly. Now we move on to the consequences for a surplus. This impacts employment and GDP, as export growth will create jobs and will raise GDP. Surpluses will strengthen domestic economic performance, but other countries may face job losses. So the unintended consequence of this is that they lose jobs, they have less income, and they will buy less imports. The next impact is the standard of living. Surpluses will bring higher national income to the country, as firms gains from strong export competitiveness. This leads to improved standard of living for citizens. When exports are greater than imports over time, there could be inflationary pressures, so strong export demand will raise overall prices within the economy. This can cause demand pull inflation within the economy. Higher prices will reduce long-term competitiveness of the country. The next consequence is a higher exchange rate. Being in a surplus will increase the demand for that currency and in the floating exchange rate, the currency appreciation will make exports more expensive and this can reduce foreign demand over time. The next consequence is economic growth. Fewer exports and weaker demand will reduce growth. Rising unemployment weakens long-term expansion and stronger currency can slow the entire economy. And finally, we move on to the policies to achieve balance of payment stability. Firstly, fiscal policy. The government can increase taxes to reduce people's spending power within the economy. The government can cut its own spending to lower demand, and with less money to spend, imports will fall and the deficit will shrink. The government can also utilise monetary policy, using higher interest rates to reduce borrowing and spending. This will lower the demand, which decreases the demand for imports into the country. And currency devaluation will make exports cheaper and imports costlier. The government can also use supply-side policies. This will improve the human capital through education and healthcare. They can invest in infrastructure to support export industries, and provide subsidies and tax breaks for exporters. And lastly, trade protectionist measures. Tariffs raise import prices significantly, making them less attractive. And the use of quotas will limit the quantity of imports allowed into any country. This shifts consumption towards domestic goods and services. I hope that helped. I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye.